Hi, it's Dwyer. It's July the 31st, 2020. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Let's talk boxing. But first remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now let me just say, Roy Jones against Mike Tyson, or Mike Tyson against Roy Jones, however you want to slice it. Both guys having been heavyweight champions. Roy Jones having won titles in several different weight classes. Now first, let me uh, congratulate the California Boxing Commissioner, Andy Foster, for allowing this fight to go forward on a big weekend, Mexican Independence Weekend, right? That's a huge weekend for boxing, right? Understand, historically, Oscar De La Hoya owned that weekend, Floyd Mayweather owned that weekend, recently, Canelo has owned that weekend, and I know Andy Foster knows all this. Understand, too, politically, with COVID all over the place, with the LA Times this afternoon announcing that half a million Californians, half a million, have contracted COVID in this environment with two fighters who are in their 50s. Right, one guy not even having been in the ring for 10 years. Andy Foster could easily have said, no, I'm not going to sanction this fight. September's too close, right? Tomorrow's August. September is too close. These guys are too old. Instead, he went a different direction. Normally, heavyweights wear 10-ounce gloves. He said, okay, if you guys wear 12-ounce gloves... 12. And if this fight's not a 10 rounder or 12 rounder, if this is an 8 round fight, then I'll let you guys fight. Right? They're fighting in Carson, California. It's a great venue to watch a boxing match. Now, a bunch of people have come up to me. They're excited about this fight. Right? Two Hall of Fame guys getting together. There's a lot of nostalgia too, right? I'm in my 50s. You see these young guys. I see Deontay Wilder's dissing Mike Tyson. I'm like, Wilder dissing Mike Tyson? If you're a fan of a certain age, you've seen greatness, right? Not just Tyson, not just Lennox Lewis. There are other guys we don't even talk about who, if they were in today's era, I would take over Anthony Joshua, right? Dylan White, people like Riddick Bowe, who people need to remember, fought three epic fights against Evander Holyfield, looked like he was on his way to winning all three, quite frankly, that rematch is close, but he seemed to be turning the tide. He was the bigger man. And then Fan Man entered the picture. Google it, right? If you're of a certain age, you remember Fan Man. Things changed that night. Well, let me just say this. So for old timers like me, the idea of Mike Tyson against Roy Jones is a match made in heaven. I'm not fooling myself. I'm not expecting Mike Tyson circa 1988. I'm not expecting Roy Jones, who shows up for his heavyweight fight weigh-in with coins in his pocket and was still <laughs> outweighed by John Ruiz by several pounds. Then the night of the fight, Jones is flashing hand speed you had not seen in the heavyweight division, right? During that time period. 
and Jones incredibly, at times, against Ruiz, actually starts hunting down a heavyweight champ who knew how to fight inside. So, people are getting ahead of themselves. Here's what I've been hearing. First, they're the gloves. People say, wow, you know, 12-ounce gloves, doesn't that favor Roy Jones? Right? Mike Tyson's calling card was punching power. Aren't you deadening the punching power by putting extra padding in the gloves? Then I'm hearing, you know what? Jones had more knockouts than Mike Tyson, right? People are figuring out who Jones was. Not the guy who got beaten up by Dennis Lebedev. Not the guy leaning back and covering up for his life against Joe Calzaghe. Not the guy you've seen recently, but the guy who has 47 KOs. That's the Jones record, folks. 47 KOs in his career. Folks, that's, that's more than, let's say, I'll pick on him again, Anthony Joshua. Right? Jones has more KOs than Anthony Joshua has fights. In fact, Jones has more KOs than Mike Tyson. Tyson has 44 KOs. People are starting to say, you know what, doesn't Jones hit hard too? If this is about punching power with 12-ounce gloves, doesn't Roy have a shot? Let's go one step further. People are starting to look at the numbers and they're starting to say, well, wait a moment. Might Roy be taller than Mike Tyson? Roy's 5'11". Tyson's 5'10". Right? People are saying, well, wait a moment. This isn't a big man against a little man. Right? Tyson, dominant heavyweight champ. Roy, a visitor. Right? Roy took a day trip to the heavyweight division, then left. Okay, fair enough. But physically, you look at Tyson now, he's all muscle. You know, he's... You realize, well, wait a moment. Tyson might not be able to lean on Roy. This isn't Anthony Joshua against Roy. This isn't Vladimir Klitschko against Roy. This isn't George Foreman against Roy. This isn't Lennox Lewis against Roy. This is a guy roughly Roy's size. Right? And with age, Roy has filled out a bit. Probably won't need to have coins in his pocket for the weigh-in. Right? Then, of course, people are looking at films. They understand it helps if you're a soldier who has just been in the trenches. Right? If they call you for another tour of duty, you know what? You were just in the trenches. You're ready. You're in fighting shape because you've just been in a fight. So people are looking at Roy Jones's record and they're saying, okay, well, Roy's kept himself busy, hasn't he? Right? Jones never looks out of shape. And you notice Jones has been fighting all these years. Then you look at Mike Tyson. You realize that Tyson was hardly fighting. In 2002, 2003, 2004, 2005, he was hardly fighting. He was fighting once a year. And when you look more closely, you notice three of his last four fights ended by KO. Him getting KO'd. Right, him getting KO'd. So then, of course, you're thinking, well, wait a moment. You know, if Mike Tyson is getting KO'd by Kevin McBride, right, years ago, even if they put him in the ring, is he going to know his way around the ring? Isn't he going to have rust on him? Isn't Roy Jones the more battle-tested fighter? Now, all of that said, and I've heard some of these arguments, right? To get an idea on the level of excitement, go to the comment section of some of my earlier videos. You'll notice some people saying, hey, Dwyer, what about Roy Jones against Mike Tyson? Right? You would think they were talking about Tyson Fury, Deontay Wilder, the third fight. Right? Gamblers think there's an edge here. 
I believe there is. It's the other side of the play. I don't think this fight's competitive. I think Mike Tyson should walk through Roy Jones. First, let's talk about the size. You know, I understand that these guys are close in size. They're closer than people want to believe. Tyson's not that big a man. Right? But understand, being a heavyweight has a mental side to it. You've had some smaller guys who were heavyweight champ. Folks, they viewed themselves as heavyweights. Right? Jack Dempsey, by the way, one of Tyson's heroes. Dempsey wore black trunks in the ring. That's why Mike Tyson wears black trunks in the ring. Right? Dempsey beat up Jess Willard, a much bigger man, to become champ. Right? The idea of calling Jack Dempsey anything other than a heavyweight would have been laughable. But look at his weight, folks. Rocky Marciano. Think about it. Rocky Marciano is a guy who, you know, today would be around cruiserweight. He's one of the hardest punchers in heavyweight history. And the interesting thing with both Dempsey, Marciano, Joe Fraser, Mike Tyson, all smaller men, is that all of these guys, all of them, were punchers. If they hurt you, they went in for the kill. None of them were there to avoid you. All of them were trying to knock you out. All of them. Now, I know we've had some other heavyweight champs. Ezra Charles, Michael Spinks, who you thought, you know, this guy's visiting the division. Roy Jones. Right? I'll agree. Those guys might not have seen themselves as heavyweights. But Mike Tyson, mentally, and the mental part of the game is a huge part of the game. Mike Tyson mentally sees himself as a heavyweight. I don't care what the scale says. Mike Tyson mentally, I don't care how tall Roy Jones is. It could be one of these deals, right? Mike Tyson mentally is going to enter the ring viewing Roy Jones as a small man. Mentally. I know Roy Jones wore the heavyweight belt. There's only one true heavyweight champion in my eyes. One person who self-identifies as the heavyweight champ, and it's Mike Tyson. Let me say this, too. Years ago, I was watching a fight, and Mike Tyson was the color commentator. Now, understand, Tyson used to have a guy named Jim Jacobs. So that's a name you need to know if you're a Mike Tyson fan. Jacobs used to manage Mike Tyson with Bill Clayton. And Jacobs was a film collector. So young Mike Tyson, when he was on the way up, back when he was having problems with people like Teddy Atlas, right? Google all those stories. Jacobs and Tyson would sit down and would look at films of the greats, right? I'm telling you, Mike Tyson knows all about Jack Dempsey. People might forget that back then, heavyweights used to come in in these luxurious robes, right? You know, Larry Holmes, you always saw him in a great looking robe. Tyson was old school. He would cut a hole in a towel, put it over his head. And he and his corner wouldn't even take a long time to get in the ring. They would practically hustle into the ring. He had a guy named Kevin Rooney in his corner. Let me give Mike some advice here. For an event like this, where a lot of people are going to be looking at you, where, according to reports, the promoters got a guarantee 
this fight apparently is going to make millions of dollars. If I'm Mike Tyson during my ring entrance, I would certainly have my current crew. Right? You have a team. They've gotten you here. Have them front and center. But in your ring walk, be imaginative. Wherever Kevin Rooney is today, whatever the friction you have with Teddy Atlas, all of those guys were part of the Cus D'Amato family. Right? People might know D'Amato was the guy who guided Floyd Patterson to the heavyweight title in the 50s. Right? All of these guys rub at the cat skills. Right? Have Rooney, have Atlas, have whoever else walk in the ring with your entourage. Let me say this too. Bring back the entourage. Right? Don't have it be a MTV Broadway play type thing like so many fighters have today. And don't have it be a 10 minute walk into the ring. Right? But have the old school guys there. I was watching the Oscar De La Hoya Fernando Vargas fight. And there was a great moment. Right? Vargas walks in the ring and you look at his entourage and you notice the guy walking in front of him. And I thought this was important. It was Julio Cesar Chavez. Right? Chavez, of course, had lost earlier to Oscar. Vargas idolized Chavez. So, biggest fight of Vargas's career, he had Chavez in front of him. If you were a boxing fan, as you saw the ring entrance, Chavez's presence was more important than any music that was playing or anything the TV commentators were saying. Right? Well, let me get back to this. Let me just say this. Tyson mentally is the heavyweight in the fight. More importantly, the styles matter. Roy is going to have to do a hell of a lot of holding. He's going to have to clinch Tyson like Bone Crusher Smith did in the 80s. Because understand, this is something that younger fight fans might not have seen. A heavyweight champ who wants to hunt you down. Not in the sixth round, in the first round. Who's going to be more active? Who benefits from an eight-round fight? Folks, it's Mike Tyson. Tyson's going to be hunting Roy Jones down. Jones needs space to operate. Throwing short punches is a gift few have. Mike Tyson throws short punches. Look at the videos of Mike, you know, hitting a speed bag these days, right? Now, I'm not saying Mike Tyson is prime Mike Tyson, but understand he's fighting another guy in his 50s. You're going to notice Tyson moving his upper body, and you're going to notice Tyson throwing punches, and the punches are already halfway there. His hand somehow is already cocked as he holds it against his body. A guy who can collapse the pocket on Roy Jones and who can throw fast, short punches. A guy who can get underneath Roy Jones. Understand, sometimes the height helps the shorter fighter. Right? Roy Jones stands upright. Right? I know... I know Prime Jones would lean at the waist and have that left hand dangling. Then as you came in, he'd take a step back and throw a left hook. Understand, Mike Tyson, whereas Jones's left hook is a plus. Mike Tyson's power in both hands used to be a plus. Let me just throw out a boxing adage. Power is the last to go. Right? Jones relied on his legs. That's usually the first to go. I see Mike Tyson mentally thinking that he's the bigger man, that Jones has nothing to keep him outside. And then I see Mike Tyson rushing into the pocket, throwing punches. 
Now, maybe a big man like a Kevin McBride could grab Mike Tyson. Bone Crusher Smith, big man, could lean and grab Mike Tyson, tie him up, try to tie him up. Larry Holmes, big man. Roy Jones is going to find out that he can't tie up Mike Tyson. I think Jones gets battered. I think Tyson, and I admit Tyson's defense is not that great, but understand, sometimes against fast punchers, you can smother them. Let me also say the reflexes that Jones relied on in his youth have dimmed. Right? He's not going to be able to faint Tyson out of his shoes. Let me also say, too, a hallmark of Mike Tyson is that he runs red lights. Right? Tyson doesn't spend a lot of time standing back reading your feints. He can be a lead puncher, right? In this counterpunching era, here is a lead puncher who's going to get underneath you, who's going to destroy the pocket, and who's going to have to have the ref pull him off of you. Now, I've seen Jones pinned on the ropes in many fights. I would encourage people to look at the Joe Calzaghe fight and understand that fight's more than 10 years ago. And you'll notice Jones, after knocking down Calzaghe with a forearm early in the fight, you'll notice that the second half of the fight, Jones is overwhelmed. This was younger Jones. Jones is overwhelmed up against the ropes. Overwhelmed. That's what I think you're going to see here. I believe Mike Tyson hit hard with 10-ounce gloves. I believe he hits hard with 12-ounce gloves. Let me say this, too. I'm kind of amused, right? I don't see how Deontay Wilder, a notoriously slow starter, how many of the first five rounds? Tell us in the comment section of this video. Do you believe Wilder won in the rematch? against Luis Ortiz. Well, what I want to do is encourage people to go back to his first fight against Luis Ortiz. I think Wilder gives away the early rounds there, too. A slow starter like Deontay Wilder, who's a great long right hand, who doesn't have a lot of meat on his body, who can't fight inside, thinks he would have a shot on prime Mike Tyson? A guy who would be up on him. I mean, to the point where Wilder would think that Tyson's his belt. Right? I heard Anthony Joshua the other day giving Tyson a warning saying, hey, we're bigger and stronger now. Right? Does AJ not realize that Mike Tyson did his best against bigger heavyweights back in the day? Right? Right? So my point is simply, this is a heavyweight. It's a heavyweight against perhaps a cruiserweight these days. It's a guy who fights inside, who's going to lead. A guy who has power in both hands, who can fight low. He's shorter than Jones and he can fight lower than Jones. He understands. We're not there to see Mike Tyson on his back foot. He's not even going to pretend to have a back foot. And he's in against a left hook artist. Tyson, by the way, in his prime, he lost this in his career as it progressed. But in his prime, you might recall, Tyson would have his hands like this. And Tyson would move his upper body. He was cat quick. And, of course, if he slipped a left hook and got inside, you were dealing with an absolute nightmare. Well, understand, as you get older, he might not be able to do that for eight rounds. I'm not saying he is. If Jones has a chance here, it's in the later rounds of the fight. But I believe Mike Tyson, for at least the first six minutes of this fight, 
is going to come after Roy Jones. Now, Jones's chin is questionable. Right? There's a story going around that a younger Ray Leonard was looking for fighters to promote. And so he is looking at Roy Jones. He's at Roy Jones's workout. And Jones got decked in the workout. Right now, that was a story going around. Who knows if it's true or not. Before Antonio Tarver decks Jones. Of all the elite fighters out there, the fighter who looks the worst on the canvas that I know of is Roy Jones. The Glenn Johnson KO. That was bad, folks. Jones is on the canvas. He's not moving. This isn't Mike Tyson Buster Douglas, where Tyson reaches for his mouthpiece and then tries to stagger to his feet. No, this is Roy prone on the canvas, out. I'm just telling you, the Dennis Labetta fight. When I saw Jones on the canvas, I was wondering if he was ever going to get off the canvas. I believe Mike Tyson is going to try to test Roy Jones's chin in the first two rounds of this fight. I believe it's going to set the tone. I think Tyson is one of these guys who is loved. Right? I cannot emphasize this enough. Life is unfair. Right? Tyson's the kind of guy who after he left, you had other guys. Richland Chagayev call himself White Tyson. Right? Selkok Aiden called himself Mini Tyson. Right? I don't see the fighters out there calling themselves White Roy Jones or Mini Roy Jones. Right? If Mike Tyson gets off to a great start, and land some shots on Roy Jones, who's going to try to hug him. Right? Who has to try to hug him. I believe there's a chance that the ref stops the fight. If the ref doesn't and the fight continues, I believe it's going to turn into a love fest. Kind of like when you go to a concert and it's a classic band. People are going to start yelling, Mike, Mike, Mike. And the judges are going to have a hard time taking it away from Tyson. Let me also say, too, if there's a finisher in recent heavyweight history, it's this guy. Right? I don't mean to sound too nostalgic. I'll agree. If, if Roy Jones can somehow hug Tyson, get out of the early rounds, slow Tyson down, then develop a Buster Douglas-type jab. And if Roy can turn back the clock and get back his younger legs, maybe he has a shot in the later rounds. But that's not the way I'm betting it. I expect Mike Tyson to win the fight. I know you're getting lousy odds on it. That's the outcome I think is most likely. I think Tyson wins by KO. I also think you might have a referee who might care a bit too much about the health of the fighters. Right? Two guys in their 50s, if Roy Jones's head snaps back a couple of times, given Mike Tyson's reputation, this is like Gervonta Davis. Right? If Roy Jones's head snaps back a couple of times and Mike Tyson takes that definitive step deep in the pocket, the ref might just jump between the two of them and might conclude that he's saving Roy's life. Right? The ref may have seen the Dennis Labetta film. I expect Tyson to win the fight if I had to hedge this, since you're getting tremendous odds on Roy. I'd hedge with Roy by KO. Right? Tyson did look bad late in his career. Older guys can lose their wind, can lose their stamina all at once. Right? You look at Tyson in the third round, you say, oh, Mike's pitching a shutout here. Then suddenly, the guy comes out for the fourth round and he's breathing out of his mouth, right? He's doing everything possible to buy time and it's not enough. 
Eight rounds is a long time when you're in your 50s. To sum up, I'm expecting Mike Tyson to win this fight. I'm not expecting the fight to go as long as this video. I'm expecting Tyson to get a stoppage on Roy Jones, his first stoppage in over a decade and a half. Right? Roy's only hope to me is a lucky punch when Mike gets tired. I think Jones needs more space to throw his punches. I think Jones is going to be the only guy in there thinking about counterpunching. <laughs> I think Tyson's going to be seeking and destroying. I think Mike Tyson just does not care about Roy Jones' history or the fact that Roy Jones physically might be bigger than him. I'm going with Iron Mike here. Let me hear from you. Tell me what I've gotten wrong. Right? And I'll agree. Older guys sometimes can look older. But no one's going to tell me that Mike Tyson today doesn't have punching power. I'm not expecting a lot of defense from Mike. But I feel if you can get inside Roy's left hook, less is going to be coming back at Mike than Mike's going to be doling out. That's how I see it. I look forward to reading your comments in the comment section of this video. Thanks for stopping by.